Hey, this is um, Lauren. Um, I go by a couple of different monikers and I won't trouble you with them. Either you know me or you don't. Anyway, um, I thought I would do a quick video um, about natural remedies. A lot of times I just kind of throw them out there on Twitter like, hey, try this or that for this or that. And folks will come back and be like, well, how am I supposed to use it? What brand do I need? How often do I do it? And it's like, you know, it's only 140 characters, not a physician, not even really all that invested, but <laughs> alas, if you start something, you gotta finish it, so, you know, uh, figured I'd just, uh, glasses, my glasses, I'll leave my glasses on, figured I'd just, um, run through a couple really quickly, so, <sighs> what I want to start with is honey. Um, judging by this big ass jar of honey, I use it pretty frequently. I use it for a lot of things. Um, I actually have like probably 10 different jars of honey. This is my main squeeze though. And then there's some I use just for cooking, but, um, I like to use raw, not necessarily local honey. Um, a lot of times for allergies specifically, it's a good idea to get local honey because the bees are local. You're going to be dealing with local allergens. And that's, that's that. I mean, personally, I am allergic to pollen. Doesn't matter where it is, so I can use honey from anywhere. So if you think you may have a locally specific allergen, which who knows that until you try honey and see, um, then you may want to go with local. You can find it at any market. It's not difficult. Like, any market is going to have some sort of honey retailer. Um, beyond that, I do strongly suggest that you go raw, though, because raw is just always better. <laughs> raw honey is always better because um damn mine and gutter because uh oh it's just it has more antibiotic properties um it's a it's antiseptic it's antifungal it's antibiotic it's jam-packed full of all these vitamins because essentially the bees are taking the best part of the flower compressing it into something wonderful and that's that you can use it on your hair as hair gel. People always say, isn't it sticky? Isn't it sticky? No, it's not sticky. You know, you put it in the palm of your hands, rub it on your hair. And I mean, granted, I don't have no fucking hair, but I, I did that because it's not that big of a deal. Um, if you have blemishes, you can put, the, put it right on your skin. It's just a really wonderful little thing that I think we sort of have reduced to something that you put in tea, but it doesn't need to be that at all. <clears throat> um, next thing. Next thing I love, love, love is castor oil. This is what I use. Um, it works for me. Makes my hair grow about half an inch a month. If you don't believe me, well, I'm not willing to grow my hair out because I'm just not interested. But, I mean, I'd be up for a challenge. If I was, if I was going to be in one of those long hair care forum challenges, it would be the castor oil one. Because what it does is basically stimulate your... Um, your hair follicle and it takes all of the gunk out of your hair follicle and replaces it with something positive um i don't use it on my hair any longer obviously because i'm not in a rush for it to grow but when i did it definitely worked um i do use it on my eyelashes i mean i'm not i'm not kim kardashian with it but and you can't even really see them but i do have decent eyelashes if i do say so myself um what else is it good for? Yeah, it's obviously a diuretic. Like, people use it to keep their shit going. I don't use it for that. Maybe I should. But I'm all about, like, just external remedies. And it's excellent for that. Another thing. To get rid of scars, this is my little paste. It should look like this. The consistency should be half and half. It is castor oil and baking soda. You just rub it on. If you have any sort of raised scar like a mole like something something like that like not necessarily just like a, oh I have a scratch I need to cure it care for that yes I walk around <laughs> with aloe vera in my hand no but um aloe vera is like that shit like I mean I, I that's one of those like you know um, just being native things like native great-grandmother tell you about it that and whiskey. Whiskey solves everything. But um, aloe vera is like the absolute shit. Like, once upon a time, one of my homegirls got her ass beat, like, really, really bad. Um, 
and like sc- scratches on her face. She just looked crazy. And we like put some aloe vera on her, and the next day it was like, oh yeah, you got you got your ass whooped yesterday. Like I'm sure your spirit is still hurt, but her face wasn't still hurt. Um, another thing, let's see. My main squeeze for the teeth. Um, you can brush your teeth with baking soda. It's not going to hurt you. In fact, it's going to be great for you. It's what people used before there was toothpaste, and you know, guarantee you that the teeth weren't falling out of their mouth. As a matter of fact, it's all the fluoride and shit that we add to water that makes people have bad teeth. Um, and if you notice, most of the better toothpaste have baking soda in them. So why not just go straight to the source? Um, the reason why a lot of toothpaste manufacturers make you think that baking soda is bad for you is because baking soda costs 18 cents versus paste, toothpaste, um, you know, 3 $4. Dollars. Another really excellent thing for your teeth is hydrogen peroxide. This is Target brand. I don't get fancy with it. Like, I'm showing you all this stuff so you can see where it comes from. Some of it comes from the Whole Foods and stuff, but a lot of it is just like, hey, you can get this any fucking where. Um, baking soda is excellent for your teeth. Essentially, what it does is it bleaches them. If you put hydrogen peroxide on your hair, it'll make it turn blondish over time. It's bleach. Um, does that mean that it's bad for you? Absolutely not. I mean, you wouldn't put rubbing alcohol in your mouth, but you'll drink alcohol. It's the same way you can put hydrogen peroxide in your mouth, but not bleach. Just because it's in the family doesn't mean it's going to hurt you. A lot of people's feedback when I was talking about hydrogen peroxide was like, oh, I don't want to put that in my mouth. That goes on sores. Well, if you'll put it on an open motherfucking sore, what makes you think it's any worse in your mouth? I mean, your mouth is an open sore. It's going to be okay. And those $40 Crest White strips that you buy, guess what the main ingredient is? I digress. Um, another wonderful little thing is essential oil. A lot of these oils stink. They don't smell very good. They smell like natural fucking oil. Put a little drop, a little drop, you know, into whatever you have going on. And it just makes it smell better and it makes the experience, you know, far better. I don't necessarily care for the smell of shea butter. It smells very African. You know, sometimes I, I want to smell like, I don't know, a mixed person. And I'll throw a little lilac in it. I'm just kidding. But you can do that. Um, speaking of shea butter, again, big ass tub of shea butter. I use this shit. Like, I use it. You can look at me. Like, my skin's pretty fucking clear. Like, you know. My teeth are not yellow. This is the shit that I do all the time. As a matter of fact, I'm, I had, should have used some shea butter so I could be glistening and shit. But anyway, um, you just buy it. You just put it on. There's no magic to it. Some people like to put theirs in the microwave. I just live in a fucking house that has project heat. So whatever. Um, you can, You can add olive oil to your shea butter to make it a little softer. Sometimes it is hard. Um, shea butter is really great for your hair, obviously, but it's also good for removing scars and stretch marks. Um, I still have ever so subtle stretch marks, but my shit used to be like out of control, like straight up fucking road map status. And it's just not anymore. Like they're kind of gone. Um, if I didn't have one, a mom skirt, I'd show you what I have on a mom's skirt. Uh, Another thing about the uh, olive oil. Olive oil, along with this stuff right here, which again, you probably have in your kitchen, makes a really great exfoliant. Um, Olive oil basically is like vitamin E and like everything great in life. Um, All these like rich, hearty proteins and things that make your hair super shiny and things that make your skin super glistening. And none of it in a bad way. Um, People even wash their face with olive oil. Because um, the logic behind using olive oil or castor oil on your skin is that your skin doesn't hate oil. It actually likes oil. And when you don't use oil, it overproduces it. And that's how you end up with all this, you know, greasiness on your face. If you use olive oil and castor oil yourself, it tends to uh, prevent your face from creating its own. The oil cleansing method works for some people, others it doesn't. Google it, oil cleansing method. Um, see if it works for you. Works for me. I was gonna be popping. But um, oh, back to what I was saying. The uh, kosher salt 
and olive oil is just super good exfoliant. The kosher salt is like crusty enough that it basically like just rubs all the dead skin right off of you. Um, I like to switch it up and use brown sugar and olive oil sometimes too, but it's only so much time here. I'm already 10 minutes in. <sighs> Last thing, rose water. Rose water is like the bomb, bomb, bomb perfume. Like, I mean, I like to use real perfume. Shout out to, uh, what I be using? Oh, Kenzo flower. But that's just like a good, like, in-between spritzer if you're trying to be on that, like, let me smell good for my man shit. I mean, I don't know. Some of y'all might be into that, so. I will, if you leave a comment on the YouTube video, respond to it. And that's, this is the best I can do.